Hi there, I'm Donna. I teach film and media studies here at Andover College. Uh, I'm going to be talking about both of the courses together, but they are two separate A-levels. So film on its own, media on its own, or some students do actually do them both together because they complement each other quite well. So why study film and or media? Um, both courses provide students really with um, quite vital tools that are really necessary for understanding just how powerful the media's significance is in our everyday lives. So both courses involve the study of both contemporary and historical texts, um, both from quite an analytical approach. Film studies is quite similar to English literature in the way that we approach the text that we cover. Um, and media, I guess, kind of works in, in quite a similar way. Certainly both courses are interested in looking at very similar themes, things like representation, uh, audience, in some respects, industry as well. Uh, and also uh, looking at both film and also media language as well. So how texts are constructed, how we read them, how we gain the messages that have been uh, encoded into them by the producers of these particular texts. So both courses are two years. And over the course of those two years, um, you'll be studying uh, a range of different media forms um, and also uh, a, a wide variety of film as well. You don't need to have studied either of these courses before to um, come and do them both at Andover. We will cover all of the basic skills that both the courses require in the first couple of weeks and then build on those. These are a few of the texts that we look at in media over the course of uh, the two years of study. These are the current texts. They do have a tendency to change every couple of years, just as they become perhaps a little bit outdated and as things start to change and move within the industry. So we look at pretty much every industry within uh, the media. So we look at film, although very briefly, and it's really only in relation to the film industry, we're not really focusing too much on any of the uh, wider themes, but the films we'll be looking at here, Black Panther and I, Daniel Blake, both very different in terms of their production contexts. One is obviously a big budget uh, film made by a massive media conglomerate, and the other one is a small independent British film, not really made to produce a great deal of money, but to certainly raise awareness for the cause that's being discussed. We'll also cover music videos, so more in general, but looking, partic uh, looking in particular at two, um, both interesting for looking at things like representation of gender and ethnicity. Uh, we'll also study newspapers in general, but we'll also focus on the Daily Mirror and the Times. Um, although I guess a, a younger demographic possibly uh, aren't likely to read newspapers, um, older demographics are still um, highly likely to buy and um, utilise these for uh, information purposes, of course. Um, but here we'd sort of look at how news has changed over time. We'll also be looking at things like political ideologies, um, how news is constructed and selected uh, and mediated, uh, and then also, um, yeah, just the, the way in which news perhaps is delivered now and some of the issues with things like fake news and social media. Uh, we'll also look at video games, the video game industry, uh, in particular looking at the Assassin's Creed franchise, which is a long-running um, and highly popular game series. Um, video games, one of the, well, if not the biggest um, grossing media industry in terms of the money that they produce each and every year. So video games are certainly being treated more seriously than they have in recent years, uh, especially in relation to media studies. We'll also be looking at a range of different advertising, uh, historical advertising, charity advertising, and also um, film advertising as well, so film marketing. We'll talk a little bit about radio um, and how radio has shifted over time, uh, podcasts very quickly becoming the new way that people are consuming auditory media. We'll also look at television, so uh, TV drama, so things like The Returned and Humans, both on Channel 4. We'll also cover magazines um, from Vogue to The Big Issue, um, and we're also interested in looking at uh, online media as well and the growth of that in recent years. So quite varied. Um, within these set texts, there'll be room to discuss lots of other factors as well, 
um, we're quite interested in things like social and political context, so what's currently happening. Um, as I said, representation, audience and industry. So each of these texts serves a slightly different purpose as we study them. Uh, for film, anyone interested in doing film studies, um, a similar, I guess, kind of basis to media. Uh, here we're interested in how films are made, so through things like cinematography, editing, sound, etc. Context, when the films were made and who made them, and perhaps the country that they were made in as well. Uh, some of the films will have specialist areas, so things like auteur theory, looking at film directors. Some will have the discussion of things like ideology and spectatorship, uh, and in the case of documentary film, how documentaries function and how they work. So over the two years, these are the films that we'll look at. So Vertigo and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, reflecting both old and new Hollywood in the times that they were made. No Country for Old Men and Captain Fantastic, which are mainstream and independent American films. Amy, which is the Amy Winehouse documentary, of course, is a documentary. Um, we'll also look at the work of Buster Keaton there in the middle, who was a really prominent uh, creative force in very early Hollywood, um, making comedy short films, uh, as well as writing, directing them. He also starred in them, uh, an incredible performer, um, previously an acrobat, so very physical comedy. We'll also look at British cinema, so uh, classics like Shaun of the Dead and the not-so-classic, um, slightly obscure sightseers. We'll also look at Pan's Labyrinth, which is European cinema, uh, House of Flying Daggers, which is global cinema, and then looking at Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino for experimental filmmaking. So all of the films we'll look at from a, a slightly different perspective, although there are core cool features in all of them that we'll start off with. Some of them have slightly different areas of study, and that's obviously something that we would discuss as well in relation to those set texts. With both of the courses, there is coursework included. So in film, it would be script writing and short filmmaking. And in media, there would be a few different options. So currently, there is the option to make a music video, do some film marketing, so creating some film posters uh, and some DVD covers, all original, all original uh, images, everything kind of produced by students. Um, and there's also a TV option in there as well, and also a quite a popular magazine brief, which would enable students to test out some of their journalistic skills. Um, so coursework is uh, the third component of both of the A-levels, um, which is worth 30% of the overall mark. So in terms of uh, levels and entry qualifications, these are both A-level courses, both are level three, both a uh, duration of two years. And in terms of entry requirements, it would be five GCSEs at nine to four, um, but with a five in English language um, in both courses. And English literature is also very desirable because literature gives you some of the skills required for uh, media and especially for film as well. So five GCSEs, grade nine to four, with a five in English language for both because there is quite a lot of written work. The coursework is 30% of the final grade in both of them. Um, and both exams, uh, both subjects, sorry, have two exams and they're both worth 35% each. So the written aspect of the course when it comes to assessment is quite high. So English language is, is very useful to have um, when you're going to be expressing yourself um, in, in written form kind of more often than not. Uh, so there is a huge array of different career opportunities uh, in both the film and media industry, despite perhaps what some of those initial thoughts might be. So if you're looking for a job in this area, then certainly studying media at A-level um, and potentially at degree level is a route into careers you know, within TV, within film, within advertising, journalism, interactive media, digital marketing. There are so many different opportunities that it offers um, because it is quite broad and quite varied in terms of uh, the stuff that we cover. Uh, it could help provide um, or it could help to provide you with a foundation to sort of secure roles within things more technical. So if you've got an interest in uh, special effects or web design or post-production, then really it does kind of give you um, a variety of different skills to take across to potentially uh, higher education, but also apprenticeships and work as well. 
Uh, and then within film, again, there's a variety of different um, routes that you might go down. Uh, film is one of the most relevant subjects today. Um, and every nine days, uh, as much as moving image uh, is uploaded to YouTube as the BBC has broadcast in its entire history. Uh, employment in screen industries has grown by over 20% since 2009. So there's been a substantial increase uh, in that over the past decade. So career paths for students uh, doing film, you might find that um, students doing film are doing it because they enjoy it as opposed to you know going off and, and doing anything film related but again there are so many different options out there for, for working in film so whether students want to be filmmakers or directors or producers or again going to things like journalism, film criticism, there are so many different avenues out there for students to follow. Um, both courses give a good range of skills and both accompany um, the range of different A-levels that we offer here quite nicely. So quite a lot of students that I have doing film and media might also be doing English literature or language, sociology, uh, some of the more creative subjects, things like photography and graphics, they're all really nicely interlinked with each other. So a variety of different uh, progression uh, routes there for, for students. Uh, and obviously, if you have any other questions about that, um, in the meantime, there is some information at the end of the slides that you can have a little read through yourselves as well. So in terms of uh, facilities, uh, we've got uh, a little cinema that we use, especially for film. We've really got all the equipment student would, students would need to produce their own coursework, so cameras. Um, we also have all of the Adobe Creative software as well that they would need, so things like Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere. So there isn't really a great deal uh, that students would need to fund for themselves um, because the facilities we have here are exactly what they would need to do uh, their courses. Uh, in terms of trips, which might be a, a slight sore subject at the minute, given the current situation, um, but we've oh, I've organised a range of different trips over the um, few years that I've been teaching here. Uh, we've been to New York a couple of times. We've also been to Paris, to Disneyland, because there is a conference there, media conference. Uh, there's lots of different subjects uh, there at any one given time. Uh, this year we went to Berlin. So these places are really chosen because they've got quite a significant uh, role within film and, uh, of course, TV production. Um, no more so than in New York, um, but Germany, uh, and previously we've, we've uh, done Prague and the Czech Republic as well, both quite interesting um, industries to, to look at, both from a film and media perspective. Uh, and we always try and find time to do some of the, I guess, more touristy things, but also just to allow students to kind of experience a, a different culture in a different city. Um, so when we went to Berlin this year, it's obviously really hard to ignore the historical significance of it as well. Um, this year, alongside the sociology department as well, um, we trialled uh, uh, a themed film festival, which we're hoping to um, bring back as and when we can. Um, so on the right hand side here are just a, a couple of posters for some of the themes that we might do. Um, so this year we were very much looking uh, at sexuality. We've also thought perhaps doing something in relation to Black History Month would also be uh, a really good idea. Uh, something for International Women's Day. And then there'll be a variety of different themed um, festivals throughout the academic year. So probably once a term. Uh, so certainly something we're going to try and do a little bit more over uh, the coming year. Um, obviously, COVID distancing uh, measures being adhered to uh, and hopefully won't interfere too much with getting that up and running again through those uh, but there is more information summarized there for um, you if you um, want to have a little read through those so it's things like what skills would be developed what would we study how is it assessed and then just some of the kind of key information about why these courses are particularly relevant especially uh, in the current climate that we are in so hopefully that uh, in a very uh, <laughs> very simplistic way uh, outlines uh, what the courses are, what they offer, and also what some of the entry requirements are. So hopefully from that you'll get uh, a variety of, 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 of information in hopefully a way that's manageable and understandable. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>